Campos, they finished P11 uh, with 67 points. And we had four drivers, Oli Caldwell. Oli Caldwell then had himself a little ban where Lorin Zendeli joined for round 11. And we also had Ralph Boschung, who himself had a break, but health in force with his uh, awful health injury that he had this year. But it did lead to the unexpected return. Did anybody see this coming? Of Roberto Merry coming in for three rounds before Ralph's return with a podium at Spa. I feel this year, Campos weren't the worst team on the championship. And it's almost like the MP Motorsport that Ralph Oshong was the lead driver by quite a bit. And if he was there the whole time with a driver of equal calibre, they'd be pretty much in the midfield. I'm obviously a massive Ralph Boschong fan, so... Don't trust the words I say, but I think for what Campos are, they had a pretty good year. They also had Ollie Caldwell. So, Josh, I'm getting the impression you'll have a few things to say about this. Tyler, please jump in. This is definitely more of a discussion than a Q&A sort of session. Josh, why don't you lead the way now with Campos racing and the four drivers they had this year? Uh, how do I make my opinions known without uh, for the blacklisting you guys um <laughs> uh, i guess i'll start off with uh boshonk shall i um no for the for the rounds he was in um aside from his break due to the illness wasn't bad you know carry on from last year we had some pretty good results you know solid results a couple of podiums as well not as great as what last year was i guess but you can only expect so much out of campos at the moment um yeah, uh, so it was it was decent stuff all the same, but I gotta ask because he's confirmed for next year as well. Mm-hmm, he is. What's the end game here? Like, is he planning to do a Markle off and just sort of uh, pitch up tent and be like, right, this is my home for the next twelve years? Um, or is he got bigger plans at play here? Because it's a lot of money for a Formula Two season. I was going to jump in because when he was on the podcast with us earlier in the year, he did say that he felt this was his first chance to have a full paid season that he knew in advance. So the way that he views it, and I understand a lot of the community doesn't view it necessarily the same, is that this was going to be his first proper full season where he knows he's going to complete the season, which is something that a very few drivers get to have, you know, in particular Ralph's well, case. The saw next season. This season was meant to be, but then he obviously had the facet well, syndrome. Right. Which- reduce that so i think he's looking at this as i've still not done a full season of formula two which he hasn't to be fair to the guy but also i can understand the criticism that he's been around for a very long time but that's that's his words not mine um right so the other drivers we had uh uh, campos was roberto mary reliable enough did some good results for when he was there um he did this before didn't he where after his Formula One deal, he came back to Formula Two um, before, and then he came back again. It's like, oh, where did you come from? I didn't know you were still around. Um, but it was solid enough, you know, solid enough results for sure. Uh, who was the other replacement driver this year? Was it Zendeli? Zendeli it? had one round, round 11 it was. It was kind of anonymous. I don't remember if I'm honest exactly how well he, how well, not well he did. Far Franco Sean finished P20 and P21, my Wikipedia tells me. How so. the hell would I not know how he did there? I was at the track. <laughs> I, guess, I think that says everything, to be honest, Josh. Yeah, exactly. As for Ollie Caldwell, um, I can't really lie. It wasn't really that convincing, if I'm being totally honest. Uh, the race ban was pretty average. You could say, well, it's the first year and you, you know, you've got to give him, you know, that second year to prove his worth. Even if, if he even is in discussions for another, for another drive next year, but for, for whatever means he's in the Alpine Academy, you would expect someone who is aiming for formula one to sort of cement themselves as a contender. And I understand that you're not in the top team, but there wasn't any suggestion watching the season that he was someone who sort of stood out from the rest. If I'm being totally freaking, you know, like kind to the guy. And I don't want to admonish. I don't want to admonish and put down people because I understand it's not nice. And it leaves you with one less driver to interview on this, on this podcast and leaves me with another person who's blocked me on Twitter. But 
and the long and short of it is that when you compare these two drivers, Boshong and Caldwell, I don't think I'm going to be admonished if I say that the Swiss driver was the one who probably did perform better this year. It wasn't a year to remember as his rookie rookie season in F2. But Tyler, please talk us through what you thought of Campos this year. Um, yeah, Boshong, I think, was the surprise when he had his two podiums at the end of last year. I remember he was going to the end of the season, wasn't sure whether he was going to have another season with that being this year. And then he never got a podium in his F2 career and he got two in, you know, sort of on the bounce. And that has seemingly set him off um, down the path a bit. It is a massive shame because you never really know, even though he, he you know, he didn't miss, you know, three quarters of the season, he still missed over uh, half the season or near half the season, I, I believe. So, you know, that course had an effect on them. Um, I don't know whether Campos are becoming a team um, as a whole who are sort of on the back foot now. Um, it seems like since they lost Jack Aitken, who was, I think, their last solid driver that brought towards the front, they haven't been able to fill it with anybody who's really brought anything in. Boshong is holding that team in very good stead, but for how long? That's the question. Um, and what's the name of the syndrome, Jim? Do you remember? Severe facet syndrome. Facet syndrome, yeah. So that's the thing to keep in mind is that this isn't not just like a, you know, you sprained your ankle or something like that. This is a you know, something that could easily come back. And he has been greenlit by doctors for next year. Otherwise, he wouldn't be in the series. But the problem is with that sort of stuff, it comes back like that. So hopefully, um, just for the sake of him and Campos, he can get a, a full season in there because, yeah, a couple of podiums. And he got a podium as soon as he came back as well. He was out for what, like, four rounds and he's he is 25 which actually might surprise people i'd probably think people would give him an extra couple of years in terms of how old they might think he is so he's not as old as you might think um but yeah um hopefully next year for him um caldwell all i'm going to say is let's just hope um that he's not going to turn into sort of a marino sato type driver in the sense that this is it because uh, when you're part of you know an alpine program like that it's you easily become detached. You know, someone like Roy Nassani comes to mind when you think of drivers who are part of academies who really are below other drivers in that academy. Um, so I hope it doesn't get embarrassing because I think he's had a tough year uh, on him. Um, and then Roberto Meri definitely is, deserves a shout out. Um, he got the podium. I mean, it was a crazy race. <laughs> it was his first race that Caldwell scored points since. So that shows you how crazy it was. But um, he stepped up and regardless of how old you are, we saw Luca Giotto came into his home track at Monza and he didn't, you know, get in the points. So it's not like you, it's, oh, it's just because they're older, it's easier. It really is difficult. And he, he nearly did it again the week later. I think he span or he, he was up in the points and then he had had an issue later on. But yeah, great, great to have someone come in like that and perform uh, regardless of his age. But yeah, Campos for next year, it's going to be difficult for them. Um but, Can I just say, Tyler, I expected Josh to come here and insult people, but instead we've had you, you know, shouting uh, how Oli Coldwell is an equivalent of Marino Sato Roy Nassani, and just going out there and saying these are awful drivers, pretty much. So But in terms of rating, for me, I want to see what Josh has to say, because we're going to try and come to a compromise. But I'd say Boshong, I'd give sort of a, maybe a B, I think. Um mm-hmm. Because well, let's, let's, stick on, let's stick on the two drivers who are full, what we'd call the full okay. time drivers for the season. So that's Boshong and Ollie Coldwell. So you're going for B for Boshong. Let's go from Coldwell on your side, Josh. Then we'll go back to Tyler. What would you, what would you go down on the, the Coldwell route? C minus, probably. Like C minus. Yeah, uh, I won't go into, I won't go into the D's here because I'll just give him the benefit of like the first year stuff, even though I think he did a couple of rounds last year as well. Um, did he? Can someone fact check me on that? Did he? No, no he did. I, I remember he did because he crashed into Alessio De Leder in the last round. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> he did. He did Jeddah and uh, Yas Marina last year. You're quite <clears> right. So six races because of last year's format. Yikes! That's yeah. When you've got an extra bit of help and you and it doesn't pay off, but it does look bad on you as well. Um, Caldwell, I'd actually pretty much agree. I was actually thinking D plus, but C minus is you know pretty much next door. So yeah, it's on that category where it's like it's been bad. It hasn't been complete garbage. It's not been like one of the worst F two seasons of all time. He's not a bad driver. It's not like he's that bit worse than them. 
he's just at the bottom of that list at the moment. He just needs to get himself up. I think he has definitely got tents in him. Question We've is, had bad experiences the last few years of some certain F2 drivers that have come in, and it's just like, get out. <laughs> but Caldwell's not that. Like That's something yeah. we got to preface. Caldwell's not a bad driver. At least no one here is, you know, no one near the level of certain drivers that have come through before. But the bar is very high here. You know, you're talking, like, if you go into F2, you're effectively saying Formula 1 is there, you know? Uh, so if you go in there, you've got to obviously have a degree of, you know, um, I guess it's competency, a strong word to use in this scenario. But I mean, like, look, at the end of the day, when you've got others around you that appear to be doing a better job, I can't just sort of gloss over it and just pretend that you're doing a great job because at the end of the day, when Bosch Yong outscores him by four times the points by doing half the rounds, you've got to ask questions. <laughs> I've, never of, I've never thought of it like that. That's actually great. <laughs> but but let, let's, let's go on the score inside for Bosch Yong for you as well then, Josh, just to get through... Uh, Campos, because we've taken a long time on the first team. This could be a long ass podcast. But Boshong, you uh, didn't know what Tyler? B, I'd say. So I'd, I give I give Coolway the C minus that Josh had. I'm happy with that. But for Boshong, I go B. I was about to say B, B or B minus somewhere in that region. But I think you know when you think about the team that he did it with, you know, Campos and Campos is not an MP. They're not a Prima. So yeah, I'd give him a B in that regard because you know, and especially. Did he get podiums on his return from his Good. illness? Very first race sprint is a reverse yep. grid sprint. There, 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 there you go. He, get, he gets his. Uh, he, he gets what I call the Nicky Lauda tax. <laughs> where you come, where you come back, come back in a heroic, uh, a heroic return, and you get a bloody good result. Um, you know, I, I guess I can call it that. Either that, or about forty people have shut down this podcast and blocked me. <laughs> 